Hey everybody, this is Sean, uh, I'm the Blonde Skeleton, and uh, I'm still in the midst of like my busiest time of the year, so I'm, you know, videos are going to be few and far between here and there, but uh, uh, we actually had a snow day today, so I'm going to finish this one off and uh, send this out to you. This is just a, a little secret stash for you, so uh, this secret stash excuse me, is a project that uh, that I started working on a couple weeks ago. I'd, I'd seen a lot of these kind of things like lying around. I went and did uh, DM, uh, DM Scotty's, uh, 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 what do you call them, the beds that he made, and I just freaking love those things. They're easy to put together. Go check out his video if you uh, if you want to do those. Um, <clears throat> but I hadn't really found a, a, a good way to do bed rolls that I liked. Um, so, you know, being a fan of Sculpey and, and that sort of uh, route for things, I went ahead and sculpted some. So, uh, so that is what this little one is about. It's about creating these. I can't see if I can get it to focus. Come on, focus. There you go. It's about creating these neat little bedrolls that, uh, uh, that are really simple to do. They're super easy to do. Um, you can do basic tools and uh, a little bit of Sculpey, and uh, you can probably... I, I made about a dozen of these in about 20 minutes the other day, and then just baked them and painted them. They're really fast, uh, um, really fast to make up, and they look great. You know, I mean, I think they're the best looking... Uh, if I do say so myself, the best looking bedrolls that, uh, that I've seen. So, um, so without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so the uh, first step of this is to uh, just condition your clay, which of course is to uh, get it out of its shape, give it an even texture, kind of break it down a little bit, and make it very malleable and smooth. I take that chunk and I break it into two different pieces. The first one's going to be the haystack that goes underneath the bedroll. So I just set the other one aside for now, and I take out my trusty sculpting brush. So this is a cool little tool that I got at uh, uh, Michael's uh, in a pack of like, I don't know, five or six pieces. Um, all it is just a little brush. You can use like a wire brush or you can use a couple toothpicks or whatever you want to get this exact same effect. It's really nothing that requires a specialized tool. Had to adjust my camera here because it's too far away. Um, but uh, but the key thing to this is make sure you dip it in the water so that it doesn't stick to the Sculpey and just tear it apart because once it gets down into those uh, those thin fibers and whatnot uh, as you start to brush it, um, it it sticks to the wires really easily and it just starts tearing up the piece. I do the whole piece um, even though the good chunk of the center is going to be uh, covered up by the uh, by the leather blankets and the, the hides. Um, so uh, just because I'm, you know, I'm particular and I like things that way. So uh, I like to know that underneath it is very realistic. So um, so that just takes a few seconds. It really doesn't take a lot of time. Sorry about the, there you go. Uh, sorry about the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, focus on this camera is a little finicky sometimes. So I take another piece and I roll it out with my roller to give it a, a nice smooth um, texture. Remember to put water on your roller as well, which I, uh, yeah, I forgot to do that the first time. So just dampen it. Um, and all you gotta do is lay it down. Try not to get your fingerprints in it because you want that nice smooth kind of hide texture to it. And then I just fold down one edge and roll over it to kind of eliminate my fingerprints. You can leave wrinkles in it or whatever you want to do to make that uh, as smooth as possible. This is the pillow, which I just, I literally just squash it into a rectangle and tap, tap, tap it down. And that's it to get it to stick. And that is the basic form of this thing. The next step is to put the details in, which is the stitching, which I use just a probe. You can use like a needle or a toothpick again. Um, I just draw a line across it. I imagine that line continues up the blanket or up the, the heights uh, on the other side. Um, and then I just put them in a random pattern and uh, try to keep it irregular and stitch them together by just putting cross hatches in it. I put some cross hatching in the side of the pillows too, just to give it the illusion of being, you know, kind of a stitched together uh, hunk. And that is pretty much it for the sculpting. Alright, so now uh, we're up to the painting portion of the exciting uh, 
exciting build. So uh, first of all, you'll see me kind of futzing around off camera. It's because my brush wasn't quite ready and I didn't have my paints ready when I first started it. And then I decided maybe I ought to edit this, but then I thought, you know, let's just show them what life is really like. And so I did. So uh, that's what you're seeing. I'm gonna start off with a color called Linen. Um, that is a folk art color. Um, and I'm just uh, laying that down on the, on the, as a base on the uh, hides themselves. I'm gonna rinse out my brush real quick and come back and do the straw, which I'm gonna do in a yellow ochre. Um, I believe that is also a folk art color, but I'm not sure. I don't remember, which is it? Yeah, that's folk art color. So that's folk art uh, yellow ochre. Um, and this is a good base color for the for the straw because it kind of gives it that uh, yellowy orange kind of amber text or amber color that's a, that's a good base for that. So I don't go too crazy with the painting here. I'm not doing a lot of highlighting or super detail work. These are just you know they're decor pieces. They don't need to be super detailed. Um, they're pretty enough in their sculpture that they don't need to be painted with any sort of like extravagant scheme. Again, rinsing out my brush, and I'm gonna come back and start coloring in the different panels of the um, of the hides with different colors. Because I imagine they're they're you know maybe tanned with different substances, or they're used in uh, uh, tanned in different processes, or they're just different animals with different color hides. Um, so they're gonna be um, a little bit different in their colors. I'm trying to keep the pieces that I imagine to be stitched together the same color. Um, so um, this is a honey brown and a burnt umber. So the burnt umber is the darker brown and the uh, lighter, warmer brown is, uh, is a, oh no wait, that's not honey brown. What am I talking about? That's a nutmeg is what that is. It's an apple barrel color from, from Walmart. Um, so I go back and just kind of detail everything, um, just get in the cracks and make sure that all the stitching has uh, the paint in it. And then I come back with the same linen color that I had before and I do the pillow. I could do the, uh, the third panel of the, um, of the bedroll itself of the hides in a little bit darker color. I might have gone back with a honey brown and, and done that, but I think there's not enough contrast in the honey brown. This gives me three very bold colors. Now you'll notice that the honey or the uh, the nutmeg is not not completely covered, so I go I do go back and put a second coat of paint on all of that just to kind of even it out and make it look pretty. So uh, there's that. So that was it. That was it. That was the whole thing. That was the whole thing. It was really really fast, wasn't it? Like, uh, gosh, like under five minutes. Um, so right at the end here, I just want to give a couple of big shout outs and thank yous to, uh, to a couple of my fellow crafters who, uh, who actually gave me bumps on their, on their, uh, uh channels, uh, and, and got a lot of you guys out there to, uh, to subscribe. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I gave a thank you to Vanessa yet, but uh, but I did want to give her a thank you. I think I did it on my last video, but I'm gonna do it again. Thank you, Vanessa from uh, from the Crafting Muse, who uh, gave me a little shout out and uh, got me some some more subscribers and and spreading the love a little bit. So thank you, um, and also to uh, John Suski over at uh, Dungeons and Glue Sticks. Thank you, sir. You are uh, a fine gent. You are a fine gent. Um, uh, but thank you to both of you who, uh, who have given me a little bit of a boost the last couple of weeks. Um, I really appreciate it. And I, uh, I hope to keep, you know, good vote, good rodeos, good rodeos, good rodeos. Yeah. We're going to rodeo now. It'll be fun. I'm going to keep that. Um, I hope to keep like good videos rolling for you. So, um, so that's it really. Um, again, I don't know when my next video is going to come out. It's like kind of like a lottery, you know, it'll be whenever the hell I get time. So, uh. <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. See you soon.